augmented reality are always defined like a, a cousin technology to virtual reality. Um, people always tend to mix them up, you know. VR, if I summarize again, it's I put my headset, I'm uh, isolated in my 3D world. Augmented reality, it's something that's brand new, I would say, but it's actually it's a really old technology. Augmented reality is the principle of adding something to what you see. And uh, of course now it's very trendy to see 3D, but uh, if you have, uh, let's say in museum, that was uh, a long time ago, uh, when you go in, in museum, uh, you'll go next to a point of interest, mm -hmm. there's an audio guide launching, so you're, ad you're augmenting your reality with audio. You can also augment, it, augment your reality with image, pictures, mm -hmm. and now that the technologies are so uh, advanced, you can augment the reality with 3D models. And that's uh, maybe what some of you already experienced with, uh, with uh, the experience uh, in the very beginning. Mm. Uh, very quickly, because uh, yes. you were mentioning this to me before too, and I always thought that you know, augmented reality was just solely like this, the 3D that you see, and it's the 3D that you know, all of us have been seeing in the past few years. Yeah. But the fact that this kind of thing is and was present before, but we never, you know, thought of it as augmented reality is super interesting. And I'm not sure if many people, you know, thought of it this way. It's, uh, I think it's 1967, I think, that mm -hmm. it was uh, invented. So you had uh, adding information, new information to uh, a w location that you are. So that's mm -hmm. the, that's uh, the principle of augmented reality. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show you how you can see actually augmented reality. You know, I got lots of my customer who asked me, uh, can you build us hologram? I said, okay, uh, <laughs> we're in 2021, real holograms like you see in Star Wars doesn't exist. <laughs> you have to wait a little bit for this. Uh, but there are some good device that allows you to already see augmented reality. And if, uh, I don't know if you see them on the screen. Um, so you have uh, on the right side, you have the HoloLens, which is a more, uh, it's more for industrial or technical project. So you overlay a 3D model with this headset on. Um, at the bottom left, you have, so this company doesn't exist anymore, but uh, they used to uh, to augment reality when you are on a construction field, you know, have mm. all the information, safety information, maintenance information popping up in front of you. And um, on the right, you'll have the uh, Apple glasses. So. Mm. Uh, if you remember Google Glasses, it's, it would be the same, but uh, with uh, uh, all the new technology from today. But the device that I prefer to deploy uh, augmented reality is simply using smartphone because everybody has got their own smartphone and it's quite easy to deploy mm. uh, the uh, any experience in augmented reality that, uh, that you want. So smartphone or, or tablets. Um, so we, we talked before about, uh, and I'll again, I'll show you some project that we did in augmented reality. So you remember this project in the mines, in the cultural uh, sector from the mine. Uh, we did the also we combined VR. So at one point you go in the museum, put your headset and you are in the past. But uh, we wanted also to be very interactive when you go through uh, the gallery of the mine. And uh, we just uh, installed some shapes of people. Uh, and then when you just scan them with your phone, you will see that people will uh, take the dust that you have on the shoulder, come back, to, uh, come to you, and mm -hmm. ask you uh, uh, how you are, and they talk about their job. Uh, what's what's very specific in their job? Uh, that was the the idea. So bring bring them to life and talk to you like uh, like mm -hmm. they were in the past, and show show you how they work. Also, so you will have you will have some different hotspot uh, in the mind, and uh, it's a really fun experience. Mm. Another project, and we were really honored, honored to work with Ducati because I'm, uh, I'm a mo <laughs> I don't love motorcycles. <laughs> and um, the idea was, uh, the first idea was to create an hologram. So as I said, it's, it's not possible. So I was, I was just uh, say another way. It's com very, very complex to produce hologram and it's super expensive. And the idea was uh, to, to deploy and to be able to see this bike, the new uh, Ducati Monster which was still in production, but they wanted to share it, the, this content to everybody. Uh, it was, first of all, in Benelux, and in a few weeks, it's going to be uh, expanded worldwide. So when you go on the Ducati page and AR experience, you can mm -hmm. simply click on a, on a link, and you will uh, make the, this bike appear 
in your living room, in your kitchen, in your garage, anywhere, and you can turn around, change the colors, customize it, it's, it's, uh, and go through se several models. So it was like a, a very interesting way to communicate. And I think I saw a lot of brands who are now l using this technology of augmented reality. I know that Decathlon, for example, they, uh, for the, um, uh, for the customer, you, can, you are able to have these uh, bikes or these accessories and for fitness, you can mm -hmm. uh, fit them in your house and see uh, how, they, how, how they will look like. Mm. And yes, for those who achieved to uh, <laughs> <laughs> the little game in the beginning. Yes, great job, everyone, by the way, for, uh, for logging in and being able to, to use your QR code for this. Yeah. yeah. So for those who, who didn't have time or maybe came a bit later, uh, we, we wanted to provide a full AI experience using, obviously, the tech ball and to preview it in 3D. So I'll just shoot a little video uh, that we made um, yesterday afternoon. Mm. <laughs> and the idea is to, yeah, to have a render of uh, this tech ball table uh, and see how it looks in 3D and you can simply turn around. So. Mm -hmm. Just keep in mind the little QR code that you saw before, and you can relive this this experience uh, on iOS and Android uh, without any problems. And I have a very quick question. So, how long, like when when you guys work on this, how long does it create take to create just something like this? Because you know it looked pretty detailed if you have like this table, and then I noticed that the individuals they w they didn't look the same as like the same like. I was going to say the word fabric, but like the features are different between the table and the individuals True. and the ball. So how is it? it uh, um, even if it's a very design and stylish uh, table, uh, it's a quick, quickly recreatable in, uh, in, uh, in 3D. So uh, our designer took, uh, I would say, three or four hours to design this, this table mm. uh, uh, close to reality. And then we add some characters because we use also some databases of uh, 3D models. So that's what we just mm. mixed it up and did uh, this quick experience. Took yeah, a few hours to do it. It was like, um, and uh, as we use all the technology from Apple, ARKit, ARCore, from Google, um, these are solutions that's easily usual that you can use easily. So yeah, mm -hmm. it was very fast uh, deployment for, for this experience. So only a few hours to work on it. Mm. That was uh, last summer. <laughs> it was a very nice project with uh, Fonds National de la Recherche. And I uh, was very happy to work with them because they really initiate uh, uh, during, you know, we, we were fully in pandemic. There were not mm. much happening in Luxembourg at this time. And they decided, no, we will do a, 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 brand, a brand new campaign. And we want to focus on augmented reality because they felt that uh, there was a huge potential. And they wanted to give a user experience, uh, very simple actually, uh, you will, s th and it was in um, on the tram stops in Luxembourg, so you will so see those pictures uh, representing representing s science, and when mm -hmm. you will scan them with with your phone, they will simply uh, come to life. And uh, for example, the right example is some neurons. You will have neurons coming to you and circle you. So it was like a very very funny experience and a and. A Great feedback, actually, on this. It was like I think the first experience, uh, first campaign in AR in Luxembourg. So uh, we were really happy of the results. It was mm. uh, very nice. Also, and that will be my last example of augmented reality. Uh, so we got many others, but it was the idea was to show you the p potential of uh, of this technology, and um, that's uh, one of our partners, uh, Schroeder Associé, who wanted to discover the their building in a run different way because the building wasn't existing and they wanted to share this experience to all the future employees so the idea was to simply scan it was like it wasn't a QR code but it was like a QR code when you scan this uh, this QR code the building appears in front of you and you can select the stages the level of uh, the building and you can you know, cut it and see it really through into the details so it was a uh, yeah also a very good experience mm. to do it in AR. So I don't know if there's uh, maybe any questions in uh, yeah, I'll check. Uh, yeah, so now we'll just head over to the any questions for AR and if you had questions previously with virtual reality from the beginning of Matt's segment, uh, we can answer those as well. Uh, okay, uh, Hashi asked if uh, 
He asks, what do you think about the current adoption? Uh, it's good enough. Uh, and any thoughts on future adoption? Adoption of uh, AR, you mean? Uh, yeah, I think AR. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I was doing the first, because in, in, in AR, you have different uh, possibilities. As you saw with the TechBall uh, solution, you can simply scan a link, a uh, QR code, and you access to your uh, augmented reality experience, which is really easy to use, I would say. But if you want more advanced uh, 3D, if you want to interact with those objects and have more interaction with uh, your experience, mm -hmm. you need to have a mobile app. So that's always it's mo always complex to you know uh, ask people to download an app. You have to have a really crazy content to mm -hmm. make sure that people will will uh, will use it. But I would say that the adoption is really uh, is really fast. And as Google and uh, uh, Apple are pushing a lot on those technology, uh, even mm -hmm. even if you type if uh, if you guys type uh, Panda 3D in Google, you will see that you will have access to those uh, technologies, and you can just show a Panda in your living room. It's like Super easy. Mm. Type on Google. It's uh, so it's uh, this technology has been really democratized uh, a sure. lot uh, recently. Oh, nice! And with the coming of uh, augmented glasses like Apple and Google, it will mm. be very easy to use. Uh, it should be easy to use in the future. Oh, great. Okay, and I actually have. Uh, it was a question that I remember we spoke about before the b uh, before the tech talk. It's something you mentioned with. Um, the possibility of uh, of motion sickness yeah. if you're using uh, these headsets. So, uh, if you can go over it again, uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. And uh, uh, you know, and that's terrible uh, <laughs> in my job because uh, when I when I was first using headset, you know, everybody was curious and say, "Oh, wow, mm. what's inside? I want to try. I want to try it." And now, uh, you know, a lot of people come to me and say, "Oh, uh, give me a motion sickness. I don't want to try it." And that's mm. that's complex because. A lot of experience. Uh, I've been uh, had some conception problems, mm -hmm. and I I, th I always say that if you put the headset on and you have feel motion sickness, it's not your problem. It's that in the conception of the the experience, there's been mm. some some problems. And, um, so it's like when you go in a restaurant and you feel <laughs> bad after a restaurant. Yeah, it's like not your fault. Uh, maybe the, maybe the food wasn't good. So mm. I apply the same principle, and uh, it's the first rule number one. When somebody uses your VR headset, you cannot allow uh, and tolerate any motion sickness. It's impossible. Mm. So, but there are things that you avoid, and you have to avoid when you build such an uh, such experience. And I can say it now because it's easy because we we done all those mistakes <laughs> in the past. So we right. know that there are things that you you must definitely not do to uh, to be sure that people don't feel those uh, those problems. Mm. Because that's imagine when you provide. We were doing training session in industries, banking. Uh, hospitals. You training. We train more than two thousand people uh, in in few months. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot tolerate that. Uh, fifty per fifty percent of the people might have some nausea or oh emotions. Yeah, no. It's not. Pos it's impossible because they will start saying that <laughs> the experience was not good and they and they missed completely the training. So mm -hmm. there. So you have to make some compromise uh, in your experience and sure. and that's only we able to talk about this because we. I can tell it honestly. We did some mistakes in the mm -hmm. beginning that we we know we will never do it again. Mm. So I guess this, you know, for any VR company or anyone who's creating VR AR, it's this is something that just happens. You know, when you're at the very beginning of trying to create your product, that like you must be aware that yeah. this kind of, you know, motion sickness would would happen. Absolutely. Mm. Okay, great. Well, um, anything else, Matthew? Uh, I will even. Uh, uh, I will even share, and that's m it makes a perfect link to the rest of uh, <laughs> my uh, presentation. I, w 